Hit start recording. All right, everyone. Um, thanks, Andrew, for the great talk. Um, super cool. So now we have the live Q&A with Andrew. Um, folks, you can um, start by asking your questions on the pad. And we'll also open up this speak button room in a few minutes um, for folks who want to join here and uh, ask questions here directly to Andrew. Uh, thanks again, and take it away, Andrew. OK, thank you. Uh, let's start from part questions. Uh, the first one, do uh, I use uh, this to have m multiple configs running side by side for diff comparison? Uh, actually, I have two configurations pr pr primary uh, here. Uh, the first one is my main configuration for the whole environment, which manages all the dot files. And the second one is virtual and like. It creates a new shell with uh, some environment variables set inside it. And uh, it includes Emacs load pass uh, and other things to make Emacs uh, able to explore packages uh, inside this small uh, environment. And uh, it removes all uh, unnecessary environment variables, which pollutes the environment. So we have quite uh, small scope on which uh, only Emacs and few other packages are available. And uh, as you saw at the end of the talk, it was the example of such small environment where I set up uh, Emacs and all the dependencies from ground up. And actually, the similar thing I use for development of my projects. Uh, I have per project environments made in the same way. But usually, uh, I use my primary Emacs instance. But sometimes it uh, can be kind of mixed. I have a few talks on my uh, YouTube channel, and you can check them out to get more information about it. Uh, um, second. Sorry, okay. one quick request, Andrew. Um, people are saying if you could maybe speak up a little bit more so that they could hear you better, that would be great. OK, sure. Thank you. The second question. Uh, are you using Geek system or Geeks on top of another distro? If system, any tips? I tried Geek system, but found getting started was very difficult due to lacking like, Wi-Fi firmware and incomplete doc documentation. Uh, Personally, I use Geek System, Geeks Home, uh, Geeks as a package manager, and also the deployment tool for a few ser services. Uh, I started from very basic setup where I didn't have anything and build it be uh, piece by piece, including uh, building a Geeks Home project. Uh, so yeah, I use uh, Geek System and all the things. And uh, talking about uh, Wi-Fi, uh, first option is to buy a Wi-Fi adapter, which doesn't require proprietary firmware. Uh, another option is finding the firmware and installing it. Uh, so it's up to you. Everything uh, actually is relatively easy, and uh, you can relatively easy find the way to do it. The third question. Uh, one of the issues I have had managing Emacs packages with Geeks is a conflict between Geeks package atos read-only and the Emacs package atos hackable in real time. Any suggestions to resolve this? Uh, yes, I have suggestions to resolve this. Uh, actually, it's true. Everything which is uh, in GNU store is read-only. Everything uh, which is built with is Geeks is almost set in stone, and you can't uh, edit uh, it in a, uh, real time. But uh, what I do, uh, can I share my screen? Uh, one second. I will press a few buttons, and I hope you will see it soon. Or maybe not so soon. Um, what I basically do. I take uh, parts of the ELISP and I have them inside my scheme file that I use to define my home environment and other things. I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, see it. Uh, for example, here, uh, this part is a scheme code, but this part is a pure ELISP code, and I can uh, use a uh, indirect region and use uh, Emacs list mode here. I will edit those parts and see everything. 
And when I'm fine with all the edits I did here, uh, for example, I can evaluate uh, this form uh, using Ctrl X, Ctrl E, and so on. And when uh, I'm good with the results, I can ju just save it and rebuild my whole home environment and see it on uh, a fresh Emacs instance load from uh, from the new configuration and see if everything works here as well. So it's a little uh, less interactive than usual uh, Emacs configuration, but still works quite well. The question, what is next for RD? Actually, uh, I have a short-term plans and a little more long-term plans. Short-term plan is uh, to make a first release by the end of this year. Uh, and this release, uh, actually, RD is quite usable uh, currently, but uh, there is no much documentation and not so much uh, examples. Uh, so uh, I would like to prepare uh, documentation, uh, getting started uh, guide, uh, live CD that you can uh, use and uh, for uh, exploration uh, purpose and uh, for installation. Uh, and uh, also, I, I would like to um, uh, find uh, one or two maintainers which will help with uh, upcoming patches because uh, it's already uh, at least a few people who use it on a daily basis and they send a lot of patches. And uh, sometimes I have a hard time keeping up with the speed of creating patches. So uh, the short-term plans is to make a first release by the end of the year. The long-term plans uh, we can discuss later, uh, I think, and they will share them in RD announce mailing list. list. Okay, uh, I think that's it for patterns. Um, let me check RC. Uh, I have okay. Uh, it seems that I answered all questions that I found. Let me know if something appears. Cool. Thanks, Andrew. And yeah, I think we still have um, over ten minutes, um, like maybe twelve minutes or so, uh, of live Q and A time. Uh, on the stream. So if people still have more questions, please feel free to either add them on the pad, or I think you should now also be able to <clears throat> join this big blue button room to ask directly. Okay, uh, I see one more question, uh, but I, I'm uh, I'm not sure what does it mean. Do you use Emacs without this? If so, what, for, for what purpose and how does it feel compared to RD? Uh, okay, it's a question in general. Uh, no, I don't use Emacs without RD. Uh, actually, uh, all the Emacs configurations I use is based on RD and built from that. Uh, there, there is uh, a way uh, to uh, add uh, almost everything uh, you have in your basic Emacs configuration to your RD uh, Emacs configuration uh, by creating a file uh, in your usual .config slash emacsd directory and uh, loading it from your init el directory. So, so you uh, actually can have a, a very usual uh, Emacs con configuration workflow uh, in addition to RD. Uh, but uh, I don't use it because it's not uh, a reproducible way to do things because uh, such workflow uh, means that uh, I need to install packages separately somehow, uh, either with uh, Geeks install uh, or maybe some other package manager uh, or maybe with package manager uh, uh, like pack package AL or straight AL. And uh, it's, uh, it doesn't work well in long term because if I move such configuration which partially RD and partially uh, usual uh, Emacs uh, configuration uh, it will break on the new machine or or maybe 
uh, somewhere else where I would like to move this config config configuration later. Okay, we have a last slot for Q and A in, in the pad. <laughs> Thank you everyone for uh, joining this talk. Uh, it was a pleasure to interact with you. I will be here for at least uh, an hour or so uh, before I I will go preparing to sleep. So you can reach me by email rc uh, here in big blue button or uh, some other way probably. Are there any plans to push uh, things from RD to Geek's main channel? Actually, uh, I have a commit access to Geek's and I try to upstream everything that uh, can be beneficial for both RD and Geeks uh, to Geeks and uh, use it uh, for, 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 from the up, uh, upstream. Uh, but sometimes on some question uh, we didn't reach an agreement or uh, sometimes uh, it's much easier to implement it in a more uh, uh, rapid way, which probably I, I wouldn't like to uh, add to gigs uh, because it will cre uh, require too much time trying to fit uh, to some uh, gigs. So I keep it only in RD, but uh, the things that uh, I see beneficial for both projects, I try to share uh, and to move them to gigs. Sounds great. And another reminder for the folks that you can um, join Big Blue Button also directly if you want to um, type your questions into chat here or just ask them over mic uh, or with a microphone, you can do that as well. I think we still have about actually 10 or 12 more minutes. Um, I think I underestimated what we had. Uh, so yeah, we still have plenty of time for questions. Added uh, one more slot for Q and A in case someone would like to fill it. Thanks. How difficult uh, is to add support for new packages to gigs? Have you found that's uh, burdensome uh, versus package L or other in Emacs package management approach? Actually, uh, I find it quite easy to create packages for gigs, uh, maybe because I'm quite, uh, quite familiar with uh, gigs source code, uh, but maybe because it's not that difficult you you just open uh, a respective model uh, like RD packages or GNU packages in Geeks repository, and you define the package you want, and you define the dependencies you want. Uh, actually, a lot of packages already uh, here in uh, in Geeks, and uh, some of the packages I package in uh, RD and later move to to, to the Geeks. So uh, it's not hard to reference uh, the dependencies uh, and find the dependencies already declared for you. But what more important, you can uh, use uh, dependencies uh, not only on Emacs packages, but also on system packages. For example, 
in my Git package. You can use a reference to Git binary and uh, predefine the path to the Git binary inside a package config configuration by uh, patching the source code or something like that. So uh, any package that requires uh, some system package uh, to work uh, can use the system package as a dependency. And it is a big benefit uh, comparing to other packaging solutions, which can uh, depend only uh, ELISP packages. Uh, Duricon RD is currently uh, opinionated or is it uh, a one size fits all framework? I would say it's quite opinionated. Uh, I started from really uh, bare bone max and uh, I suffered for a while and added uh, features one by one uh, very carefully crafting the current uh, state of RD max. And uh, it's, uh, as I already said, uh, vanilla flavored. I try to stick with uh, Emax key bi bindings to use built in packages over uh, external packages or use packages which are uh, in the same way, uh, in a similar uh, work in a similar manner to be built in packages. Uh, so it's it's not usual. Uh, it's uh, not that user friendly as Doom, um, uh, Doom Emacs or Space uh, Max. It's um, more like a prelude uh, or uh, even even uh, more vanilla flavored than prelude. Uh, but uh, the good thing is that you can declare feature yourself. And if you don't like something about RD Max uh, provided by uh, features created by me or uh, other contributors, you can use the features declared uh, by uh, yourself or by other people. Uh, and uh, one of the plans uh, that I have uh, according to RD, which we are discussing on mailing list right now, is uh, contrib. Uh, directory, which can include features uh, provided by different people. For example, uh, it's quite often uh, asked to add uh, evil support, but I don't use uh, evil and uh, I don't want to maintain this package, but uh, I understand that many people uh, use to such a way uh, of interacting with text editor. Uh, so it would be cool if someone who actually using uh, this feature will be maintaining it in contrib uh, directory. And uh, this feature will be sound with uh, all other features uh, which provided by, by RD itself. And uh, I think uh, this way it can cover more uh, people needs that, that it uh, can cover right now. So it will fit more uh, people but uh, the core RD uh, won't be uh, expanding its scope. It will be quite focused. How to get into RD uh, is the already documentation and getting started uh, guide. Uh, there is a repository on source hat, uh, git source hat slash abcw uh, slash rd and here you can see a very uh, small readme which probably uh, doesn't give you too much understanding of what is going on but it has uh, all the necessary links uh, it has a link to manual it has uh, information about mailing lists which you can use uh, to get help uh, it has uh, information about IRC channel in uh, Manol. Uh, and you can join this channel and ask questions here. And of course, uh, you can uh, take the source code and take a look at it. And currently, <coughs> we have uh, examples. And here in examples, uh, my uh, whole configuration of uh, my team is present. It's a little bit uh, drafty. Uh, I, I uh, would like to uh, reorganize this a little to make it easier to follow. 
and before first release, hope I will do so. Uh, but you can uh, use it as a example, build on creation, but by uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, there is no, uh, the documentation is not very uh, extensive. So uh, you can uh, find it a little hard to follow. Or maybe uh, you can find it missing uh, some uh, important things. But uh, before first release, I hope uh, the situation will become a little better. But anyway, you can always uh, ask questions until the documentation is ready. Um, can you mix RD with custom Emacs init file? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, I already mentioned it. Uh, you can just define in your init EL uh, the statement that you load some uh, other file and use this file as your usual init uh, EL file. Uh, it will work uh, completely uh, okay, and you can have uh, you can partially migrate to RD uh, by using such approach. But I don't uh, recommend this approach uh, in long term. I already mentioned it, uh, but having usual initial file uh, and managing your dependencies uh, using package EL or, or uh, straight EL uh, doesn't cover uh, system dependencies and other stuff, which will lead to uh, maybe uh, irreprodu irreproducible configurations. The heads up that we have about two more minutes of live Q&A time. Um, and then after that, the stream will move on. But people are welcome to continue asking questions um, either on the pad or IRC or by joining the speak blue button room directly. Thanks again, Andrew. Actually, I didn't expect to, so, so much questions. And uh, when I first uh, took a look uh, at, at the path and thought, uh, OK, uh, those six slots for Coin Day will be enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always a nice surprise, I guess. I hope everyone will be okay with jumping windows around because I switch between workspaces and it may be a little too noisy. <laughs> yeah, I think it's fine for the most part. Um, it was a bit of an interesting thing trying to keep up the stream with it because like by default, we maximize the um, speaker's webcam, but then you're also yeah. sharing, sharing your screen and sharing important details. So we were also trying to get that um, in the on the stream as well. But yeah, it was fine. Okay, I think that there is no more questions, and we can finish Coin Day section. All right, sounds good. Um, thanks, thanks again, Andrew, for the great talk. Um, as a fellow um, tiling window manager user and GNU Geeks, um, well, former commuter, but still very much enthusiast. Um, I'm very much interested in this, so I'll, I know I'll definitely be checking your workout. So thanks again. Thank you very much for organization and all your contributions. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Take care and uh, we'll uh, see you around. Bye bye. Bye.